first joined Max the first time in 1964. That was my first uh, professional gig with, with Max Roach and Abby Lincoln. Abby was singing with, with Max at that time. Bob Cunningham was the bassist. Uh, Ronnie Matthews was the pianist. Julian Priester was the trombonist. We were the front line. And that was the first band. I, I stayed with him, him for about a year. In 65, I joined Art Blakey from my dad's nightclub because Art Blakey was working at the club, North and Lounge. My, you know, my dad owned a nightclub. And um, he found out that John Gilmore was leaving. And so he called me because I was living in New York. I, I, just, I just moved to New York in 58. So, but when he bought the club, I would commute on the weekends down to Baltimore from New York. So he said, why don't you come down and sit in, you know, cause Lee Morgan, I knew Lee, you know, and Lee liked me, you know, liked my playing and stuff. And John Hicks was trying to get me in the band. So they was trying to get me in the band anyway. So I came down, sat in with it, you know, with art and, and art hired me right then. I joined a band from my dad's club. And then we went to the, our first gig, my first gig with them was Boston at the jazz workshop. Um, we did that. And that's where I met my, um, my oldest daughter's mom up there. 67, I, I, you know, joined Max again. I think that was around the time we did the uh, Members Don't Get Weary. Well, I, yeah, I had been working with him, with Charles Tolliver. Charles was in the band and Stanley Cow and Jimmy Merrick. So that was that band. But then we, we went through a lot of bands too. I went through that band. And the whole time I was working with Max, I was also working with McCoy Tyner. And, and that band was with Freddie Waits, Herbie Lewis, and... Um, I always said, you know, this, this would have been from the years, like from 67 to like to 69 to 70. I, I worked, I was working with Max and, and McCoy, both bands. And I kept saying, man, I know one of these times I'm going to have a conflict and I'm going to have to choose which band I'm going to stay with, you know, because uh, that happens, you know, happens all the time. But fortunately, it never happened. <laughs> N neither one was working that much. <laughs> we weren't working. McCoy wasn't working that much, and, and Max wasn't working that much. Yeah. So I never had that conflict. But we went to, in 1969, I went to Iran with Max. And that band was Woody, Woody Shaw, Reggie Workman, and Stanley Cowell. And there wow. are tapes. There are tapes of those concerts wow. which Max has, but and the family has, and they, they've never released them. I've never heard of Max. Always talked about it. I would love to hear it. That that's what I was doing all that time. And and you working with my band, well, you know, thinking, you know, I, I've been a band leader since. Oh, probably my uh, since I was about twenty years old even 19 or 20, because I, you know, my mom had a, she was in these society clubs and uh, social clubs. And whenever they would give a dance, she would hire, you know, they would hire me. So I became, you know, I started leading a band. I've had a band for all these years and I, it's a necessity. It's not a luxury. It's a necessity. And that's why a lot of great band leaders will lose money just to keep the band working. Duke uh, Ellington. Miles Davis. And you could go on and on, you know, yeah. back, you know, it's yeah. Count Basie. I mean, you, you have to, if, but it's a, it's, you, it's a must. You got to have a band. The music will not grow without a band, without bands. That's why it's not really growing right now. But is that there's another reason why it's not growing. Yeah. It's because of the influence of another culture on the music, which is a different culture. They're trying to teach 
how to play this music from from the African culture using a European way, way to learn. And that's not how it's done. You know what we have never come to grips with, well, with a lot of things we've never come to grips with, but music is actually the only religion that nature has given us. Music has given us religion, but man keeps trying to make up religions, you know? <laughs> yeah. And we already have it. Because in the ancient times, whoever was in charge of the ceremonial musics for births and deaths and harvests and whatever their ceremony, whoever was in charge of the music was like the priest to, the, to whoever the leader of the country was, uh, you know? Yeah. That, that's how important music has always been. And that's why it had to be corrupted it had to be taken over. It, it couldn't, it couldn't. Look, I mean, look, the most famous popular people ever on earth, you know, other than Jesus and those, you know, the religious, uh, were like Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, you know, I mean, <laughs> Prince, you know, but people like musicians. Yeah. Stones, John Lennon, that because music is the religion and we lost it. We just like we lost who we are. We don't realize when I hear somebody say black person or white person, I'm insulted, you know, because you think I'm as stupid as you are. You know, I know there's only one race. Yeah. I know. I know that. If you don't, I know that. And you're not going to make me feel stupid by agreeing with that.